welcome back to all of you participants. So in this session, we will start looking into the account and we'll get a good overview of this entire account. Okay, so my question for all of you is, is Azure a public cloud or a private cloud, everyone? Question number one, is Azure a public cloud or a private cloud? Public cloud. Correct. It's a public cloud. A cloud that offers services to the end clients, individuals, organizations, companies, Definitely a public cloud because it's available for everyone to use. So if Microsoft does offer their product under the cloud category, it is branded as Microsoft Azure. Azure is the name of the cloud platform that Microsoft has to offer. So let me just do a simple analogy so that you can easily relate. Let's say you have some cash with you and you want to go ahead and avail the banking services. What do you do? You go to a bank and you avail the services from the bank that includes deposit of the cash, that include the withdrawals from the bank. That is like deposits, you do withdrawals, Next, you will go ahead and avail other benefits of the bank. So do all this, to do all this, what does bank would need from you? Bank would need that you become their customer for them. They want you to become their customer. How? They will identify you by giving you a customer ID. So with that customer ID, they'll track you or with their account ID, they'll track you. You are a customer for us. You have this account ID. Take this account ID from us. So based upon your account ID, they will go ahead and keep tracking you who are basically like they keep on tracking us and they see what services are you availing from them. So in the same way, participants, when AWS Cloud do offer their services, this account has a vital role to play. This account has a very vital role to play. Why? Because you are availing their services via an account. You have an account and via this account, you are taking the services from Azure. So Azure just like Azure as a big system, just assume like a server that is available, it's massively huge server. So you're availing their services for that you are given an account ID that from this account ID, you will go ahead and avail their service. You will go ahead and avail their services. So to avail their services, you need to have an account ID. And that is what you people right now can you see on the screen. This is an account. So in order to avail the services, you are getting an account. So the important point here that I want to drive participants is that when Azure becomes the public cloud services offering from Microsoft in order to avail their services, the first thing that you should have is an account registered with them. Whether it's an individual or a company, they will have an account registered with Microsoft. Everyone, are you with me, people? Hello? Participants, everyone, are you with me? Yes. Yes, yes. yes sir. So, once you avail a service, the next thing is accessing that account. The first method by default method that you'll get is portal. Portal is the default method that you, most of the people use, but that is not the only way to access your account. Like in order to avail your account, you can use 
by visiting the branch, availing the services of the bank by your account ID or by logging with a mobile banking or internet banking you use. So portal is one method which is default and 90% of the you know people prefer to use portal. Portal is like, see this is a UI. You can see this is a UI. From UI you can create a server. You can create a database, a system where you can go ahead and connect to the resources, all your resources that you hold. So portal is basically the default method that a lot of companies prefer to use or the preferred medium to connect to that account and avail the services from Microsoft Azure. Is that clear everyone? So yes. I have registered an account with Microsoft and I'm trying to avail the services from portal. That is the meaning of portal.azure.com. It means azure.com is available to provide the services of cloud from the client from the vendor Microsoft, you have to register an account. After registering an account, you will go ahead and start using the services under the portal method. Why are using the portal method? You will start using the Azure, portal.azure.com. So welcome everyone into the account. So the account is the first in the hierarchy that you would be giving access to to avail the services. So once you're logging into the account, the next comes is concept of directory. Here you can see there is a directory that is associated called default directory. So this default directory can be Easily understood if you go ahead and take the word as organization. Organization. So what does that word organization means? Inside the account, inside the account, you can create multiple organizations or one, two, three. For now, there's just one organization that you have. As of now, so to this organization, you are associated. Currently, it's a default organization that we have. So what is organization? Inside an account, you have default organization. Next to that, you can create multiple organizations. Like you can go ahead and understand this logic. Let's say you have an account. Or a company. A large company where this company is now. Into different units, organization units. And then you have something called organization units, OU organization units. Maybe in a company, it's purely into development. There is a development organization. There is a warehouse. There is inventory. So the point is, if you want to go ahead and have a company that supports various organization units, this option will be of great help to you. Why? Because you can create different organization units and hold inside under the same company or the same account. If you go ahead and treat your account at the 
top level, you can go ahead and have different OU units, organization units. So what happens? You get to see different organization units under the same account. It becomes easy for you to handle different accounts, different organization units under the same account. So what are the benefits for you? The benefits are instead of clubbing all the units at one place, handling them as different organization units makes it easier for you. Makes it easier for you. What way when it have different organization units, you can have separate resource group, separate billing, separate resources, and all the resources are handled at one place. Or let's let's uh, let's put it in a way: the resources are separate. What I will do instead of making it this one unit that is making the billing, the payment at one place. I'll go ahead and make all the payments by one company. So the units are different, like development is different, warehouse, inventory, sales, marketing. I'll go ahead and make different units. Or the other way that you can easily relate is, I can go ahead and create for this company, Three different environments for the product. The other level. If you are, if it, if this is not clear, technically I'll make it easier for you. I'll create dev environment. I'll create a QA environment. I'll create a test environment, and then I'll go ahead and create a prod environment. So what I meant with that, I go ahead and create different environments under the same account. Or some companies, what they do is they go ahead and keep a separate account for production, separate account for production, but for a dev test QA, dev test QA, or dev and test, you can treat under the same account where they are of different organization. So let me just go ahead and show you how these units look like, just for your information. Don't create it, but I'm just giving you an example. See, this is a default directory that is available. Right now, I'm inside my default directory. If you log in, you will not find any directory, something like this. This is something which I have created. I would like to go ahead and do a switch from this account, which is a default account to newly created directory. So do check out participants. Now I'm inside my newly created directory. The newly created directory is given a name, SSID Cloud Solutions. That's the name of the other organization account, organization unit. Now I'm inside this account. I'm inside this directory. The resources are different. Just an example for understanding purpose. Let me show you some resource groups. I don't have any resource group. Let me show you some storage accounts. I don't have the storage. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a switch from the default directory back to from old account or back to default directory. I'm inside the back default. You get to see some resource groups. See, there are some resource groups that I've created. I'll show you some accounts in my system. Let me go ahead and show you storage accounts. This is storage account. Storage account means a place where you do store your objects directory under the default directory. So this gives you a great way to handle different organization units under the same account. Everyone, are you with me, people? Hello, participants. Are we? Are we? Are we good? Uh, this is a Azure, right? Yes. Okay, and uh, 
actually as per my knowledge i know that the azure is also used for the like check the mfa troubleshooting pardon you are getting something mfa yes mfa means multi factor authentication are you referring yes yeah we can provide mfa no harm with it you can go and do a multi factor authentication but suddenly multi factor authentication is the discussion something that we are not doing we will go and do this mfa mfa will come in when users like you and me are making an entry so in order to authorize our access we go ahead and allow mfa to be associated so like maybe a a device we can use an app we can use where codes are generated once the codes are generated i need to go and input those codes so that only those people who are allowed to go and have access to the account and associated with the multi factor authentication will be go ahead and get the access like two way authentication like most of the people use login to do so first first step will be password with a username will log in next step is to go ahead and authenticate with a otp there can be an otp that is coming in for you to log in there can be an sms there can be an approval so this part is something which is multi factor authentication is associated is that clear yes yes, yes. so i think it is not the part of discussion at this moment what we are trying to do is we are trying to go ahead and focus on the portal that portal what does it allow us to do so in portal we get to see all resources at one place a ui method and how do you go ahead and provide multiple and in the portal in the portal you shows uh, that you have created an uh, other folder uh, in the default setting right other folder you mean to say other directory you mean am i yes, right yes 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 so the concern is like how it is created okay no worries we will go ahead and look into the creation a little later because that creation is part of a task we will do i am saying assuming that if there is a requirement for you to consider multiple organization units so keeping in mind how do you switch from one organization unit to other organization under the same account of or same umbrella did you get the logic we will go ahead and do this account creation we will go ahead and do this uh, directory creation when there is time uh, for us to go ahead and directory is a directory in which we can kept our all other accounts in a single shot right correct all your not accounts all your directories can you relate okay. this directory as a unit under the same organization see let's assume that you have a company under the company you will get to see different organization units for example the best way to relate is a project which has three different environments dev qa and prod so mm -hmm. you can have three different directories dev directory qa directory and prod directory so to host all your resources at one place in one account or you can go ahead and relate with a product based company which is developing products maybe they are developing products where they are de doing development for it one organization unit from there they have another organization unit relevant to inventory i go ahead and place all my inventory units next production unit or in other way let's say there is a company company c1 and it has lot of it's a group of companies so another company c1 c2 c3 all the companies under the main company called company group of companies so it becomes easy for you to go ahead and attach all the group of companies under the main company and then handle it at one account when comes to payment this company will make the payment for all the other companies hope is it that hope is that clear yes yes welcome kumar uh, hi kumar this is rashegar yes yes yeah uh, i have a small doubt uh, regarding 
as you showed us creating the directories for each service do we need to create directories or it's a completely for single directory each i mean each azure whatever service is providing azure for each service do we need to has their own directories or correct now let's go for now just keep a little aside the directory so let's assume that there is only one directory as of now prison so under the one directory you can see all the services at one place can you see all the services all the resources at one place you see all the resources at one place now what i will do assume that there is a new company or a new directory to be created assume that i have created it now you can see there is an other account that is created what i will do i will go and do a switch into the next company that is next directory so the next directory is open for me can you see all the services at one place once again can you see all the services at one place see all the services so do you think now keeping in mind every service will should have a new directory no under the directory you will get all the services all the services are mapped to one directory okay in you in okay. your case it will be default if you want required to go and create multiple directories you can create multiple directories okay clear now yeah i am clear thanks well kumar hey kumar can we consider this as a tenancy multi tenancy kind yes the name this this is actually named as tenant this is a tenant you can you have to treat it as tenant that is a topic that will come under identity and access management where it will go and ask you to create a tenant under the tenant id exactly it's a tenant that you get okay. to okay. so now what i would like to show is participants once i'm back into the account what i was discussing I was discussing like you are able to go ahead and get into the portal azure portal you are getting a directory to access your resources now what is the logic behind the manage what is meant by management means when the resources are created how do you go ahead and handle all those resources definitely you may need to go ahead and create certain resources and group them and manage them so that is where the concept of resource group will come in so if you are not able to find the resource group just type in resource groups you will get the resource group here this resource group is part of once again the default directory because i am not switching into the next directory so it will remain to whichever the account that you are in so what i would like to do is now i'll just press this create and it will ask me certain input details from me that is like what is your subscription i'll come back to subscription a little in a while it will ask me what is a resource group you want to create i want to go ahead and create my resource group to keep all my resources at one place followed by location where you want to keep i want to go ahead and keep in australia east so it is a checker that you have pay as you go model the resource group and australia east with those details if you need any tag to be added you can add then a review and then do a creation i am getting a validation pass for the resource that i'm creating and i'm going to go ahead and create it with that my resource group gets created so what is the benefit out of this resource group the benefit is all my resources i can put under one resource group and track them as part of my resource group you can see right now i don't have any resource let me go ahead and show you another resource group where i have one service which is like a storage account that i have associated so what is the benefit tomorrow if you are working in a project where you have tens of tens of resources 100 resources that you are managing maybe an instance maybe a function maybe a logical app maybe a uh, you know a database or maybe a server maybe volumes so it becomes very very difficult at that time to keep all those resources so in order to handle the resources to have a one view you can create a resource group and check all the resources that are associated right now you can see there is a resource group are we clear participants the main reason behind a resource group 
Are we clear, everyone? Hello. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so the resources is means that we have to uh, like as per our need, we are going to create all our resources in a one group where we can find every resources in a single category, right? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can you repeat this part, please? Your voice, we are not clear that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Participants, are you with me? Yes, yes. Can you hear me now, participants? Yes. Yeah, now we can hear. Yeah. So, what I was discussing, I was discussing a very simple scenario that I will give you. Let's say there is a project that involves the following things. What are the following things? Uh, two web servers for me to run my application. One app server for running the application. One database, uh, two storage buckets to store the data. Okay, and uh, what more can be? Yeah, one function or Two functions, something, Azure functions, to host. So now, these are my resources that I need to create: servers, a database, a storage function. Now, how will I know that these resources are at one place? So totally two, three, four, six, eight. Totally eight resources I have. Now it becomes difficult or it makes it very difficult to keep track of all these, where are these resources, where they are spread. So that makes me difficult. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and create a resource group called, for my development project, I'm considering a resource group called dev-rg. And whenever I create an instance, it'll ask me, hey, what is the resource group that you want to associate? I will associate to DevRG. Another resource group, DevRG. Another resource like function. Everything I'll go ahead and create all the resources to the Dev-RG. So what happens when I go ahead and make sure that all resources get created? So these all resources will be part of this resource group, Dev resource group. Next, taking this logic, our idea into the next segment that I want the same similar set for the next account or the next set of resources that I'm creating. I'll go ahead and create another set of resources for my test environment, for example. This is my dev environment. This is my test environment, same. But now what I want is I want four web servers. What I want is now totally four web servers two app servers, one database, four storage accounts, and four functions. These are my requirement. Now from dev to test environment. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and create my test hyphen RG, my resource group I'll create. So what happens now keeping in mind the two resource groups, one dev resource group and another one is test resource group. It makes it easier so that my Different people, let's say there is a test engineer, I ask him to work on test resources. He will first log into the account. He will go to the resource group and he will look, okay, test resources. Okay, there are four web servers, two app servers, one DB server, one storage account and function. What I will do, I'll only give him access equal to, I'll go ahead and I'll put a scenario where 
access equal to test hyphen rg that means to the test resource group only he can access and i will deny his access access denied access for dev hyphen rg resource group everyone are you clear participants now did you get the logic this is how the resource group can be of great help to you so keeping all the resources at one place clear everyone yes okay so i did create a resource group here my resource group doesn't have right now any resources it's empty there is nothing inside of it now if this is the resource group that i have can i go ahead and start creating resources yes let's take an example i want to go ahead and create a database just an example for your information so the moment i go ahead and click create a database i'm creating in microsoft azure so this guy is asking me same question under the subscription what you would like to go ahead and create the database and associate that with the resource group now i'll go ahead and associate the resource group now you are able to relate what is the benefit of a resource group it will go ahead and attach it will ask you when you are creating a resource to which resource group would you like to allocate database resource group participants are you with me people hello participants can i have a quick round of confirmation from all of you Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Her voice is breaking. No, I'm not breaking. I'm just placing myself on mute, awaiting for your confirmation. Okay. Okay. How about now, participants? Yes. Okay. So now we have gone ahead. We have looked in. the idea of a resource group that means under an account you will get to see the next level of hierarchy is directory you will get a directory under the directory you are creating resources resources you can go ahead and logically containerize or logically collect them and make them part of one container now a very important point would come in then is kumar how about resources if i go ahead and create if i'm creating a resource like this database will i be getting charged very very important because resource group is keeping the resources at a place but how about a scenario will i be getting charges for this resource that i going to use from my side the answer is yes you will be charged let me show you how much charge you will get at participants just an example i'll show you test You just go ahead and create a server. Yes, some random name. Yeah, and test user. Don't create anything, participants, until unless I ask you to do so. Why? You'll get the reason now. now go and look at the cost the database cost can you see the cost for the database running inside azure cloud everyone Twenty-six thousand inr 26870 inr per month that means if you run this database for the next one month in your project you are required to pay 26000 so why did i go ahead and put this price for you not to make you scared but very important point is when you avail services from cloud providers like azure aws google cloud they will ask you to pay for the services that you take from the service provider are you with me people hello you have to pay them for the services that you have made when it comes to payment they have to 
track you that what kind of services are you availing from them that means they will have to meter they have to put a meter that meter checks like in our houses you get to see something called usage of the electricity for the electricity that you usage that you do there will be a meter that tracks your electricity that means how much of electricity have you used from the previous month to the current month or the previous month usage you will get the bill generated for the current month so in the same way participants it is saying that if you use this database for a month period from today to the next month for this whole month this would be the cost for running the database that is the cost that you would get clear participants did you get the logic so in order to keep a track of this services that you are utilizing into azure azure says okay now we will give you something called tracker for using the resources can we request the participants to check your audio can you please remain muted because there is a background noise happening can i request welcome so it will say i will give you a tracker or you are to associate this resource with a tracker that can track what is the kind of billing happening in your account so that is where participants the next concept comes in which is called subscription the next you are subscribing to that service from azure and avail that service and you are ready to agree to make the payment to azure that is where the word for subscription you subscribe you are subscribing to azure subscribe to azure and because of this subscription that you are in because of the subscribe to the azure services you are ready to make the payment as well you are ready to make the payment so here in order to make the payment they have to go and track what is your billing what is happening inside your billing with regards to subscription so right now in you in my case participant there is something called pay as you go pay as you go means pay as you go what is pay as you go model the pay as you go model says that you go ahead and consume a service called s this is a service called s you go ahead and use it for one month for the next one month and it cost me something like let's say 0.50 usd for 1 hour 0.05 usd for 1 hour so the bill that i'll get for the month is 0.5 dollars multiplied by 720 hours in a month 24 hours multiplied by 30 30 cross 24 to 720 so roughly comes up to 360 usd is the cost so this has the logic that you are paying for this 360 because you have gone for a month period for the prices that we keep i we kept 0.5 usd so using this 0.5 usd we are you are making the payment to azure you are you are agreed to make the payment to azure and the payment is up to 720 hours that you have consumed and this is a cost so the bill will have 360 usd generated and you have to make the payment for that 360 usd everyone are we clear participants with the subscription pay as you go model in my case it is pay as you go model okay so the bill is generated as per our usage right yes correct okay so participants in my scenario in my scenario it is 
pay as you go model. So participants, if you go ahead and avail the services from Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Azure says for those participants who are very new, who have just registered with us, you can avail our free trial services. Free trial services means that service would be given to you for next 30 days. In those next 30 days, you can avail with some credits. Azure will give you some credits of 13,300 INR. This is for new people like you. You can avail these services for next 30 days. They account for 30 days with the credit of 13,000 INR. That comes under free trial. Everyone, are you clear participants with the concepts under the subscription? Subscription relates to something that you are subscribing to Azure services, availing their services and ready to make the payment. So if you are registering with the first time with Azure, you'll get the free trial subscription. Once you are done with this, you are forced to shift to pay as you go model. Pay as you go model means these credits are done. Nothing with regards to free trial, everything will be pay as you go. Pay as you go means you pay as much as you use. You pay as much as you use, pay as you go more. Let me show you an example. Let me take you into subscriptions that I have. So let me just go ahead and click on this ad now. And it will say, what is your availability for the subscriptions? You have to require to go ahead and create a subscription. So participants, we will learn about the free trial account because once we start into the account, see my free trial is already done. It's, it says that free trial is already done. My, op, my option is done. I'm not eligible to use this offer, right? I'm already done with the free trial. Now I've been asked to go ahead and use pay as you go. Pay as you go means as much as I use, I'll have to pay for Azure. Okay, so participants, this discussion now gives you a clear picture. What is resource group? What is subscription? What is account? What is portal? What is UI? What is directory? What is tenant? Did we get a clear picture with these terms, everyone? Participants, are we clear? So if you get a clear picture of this account with the subscription, this has a role to play for getting a clear picture once you do a login to the account, so whenever I say account, it's that you will reach out to azure.com. If I say portal, you will reach to portal. From portal, you will start availing the services. You will check for the services. You find those services. You will attach with a resource group. You will use a subscription. After that, you will first use a subscription attached next to a resource group, avail the services. And you will start using if anything that you will create, there will be one single default directory. That is, the name itself is default directory. You will start using the default directory. From there, you will avail the services. Over the month, whatever the billing that happens, that will be tracked and the bill will be generated for you. You will make a payment against it. So participants, with this, I hope you got a good amount of insights into the portal, services, subscriptions, resource groups, everything, everyone, are we clear participants? Do you have any questions to be discussed now? Do you have any questions? So for the resources, like if we are uh, going to add something in our uh, subscription,